Hello, my name is James Duffy and I'm the designer of the 124th scale V2 kit from Space Monkey Models. I'd like to welcome you to this series of build videos for the kit during which we'll progressively assemble, paint, and decal an example of the V2 kit. While this series is aimed more at those folks who've never built a scale model before, my hope is that even experienced builders can pick up a few new tricks or techniques that they might be able to use in the future. This is how the kit comes packaged. Rather than do a full review of the kit contents, I'll encourage viewers to take a look at the unboxing video for the kit that I also have online on our website. Um, when we're done, we will have a kit that looks very much like this, a model that looks very much like this. This is a finished example of the kit, completed in the White Sands Gate Guard marking option in the kit. We'll be doing a different finishing scheme on the, the one we're going to build here though. Let's begin by going over some suggested tools and supplies you should have on hand before you begin your model. Okay, the first tool you'll need is a quality knife, such as this X-Acto blade holder I've got right here. This is a trusty number one blade holder from X-Acto, and uh, this is a box of number 11 blades. Uh, you can get uh, five packs of blades at the hobby shop for probably four or five dollars, or you can poke around online and find a hundred pack, which you can pick up generally for around 15 to 20 dollars and save a whole lot of money. The next thing we'll need is a sprue cutter to cut the parts off of the sprues. This is a purpose-built sprue cutter. Kind of fancy. Uh, I think I paid $15 for it some years ago. It's got a couple very sharp jaws here that you use to clip parts off of sprues. An inexpensive alternative to that is a pair of toenail clippers. It's kind of gross, but they work great. So that's an option available to you as well. Another thing we'll need to finish this kit is a razor saw. This is a Tamiya razor saw I've had for many years. It's great, it's robust, very sharp, works great. Um, there are a couple more options I'd like to point out. This is a Zono razor saw I've had for some years, although I find it's a little tougher to control the pistol grip style saws. Another alternative that's very inexpensive and available at most hobby shops is an X-Acto razor saw. You'll also need an assortment of sanding sticks, such as these here. These are again available at just about any hobby shop. Uh, I purchased these um, at a hobby shop. I've also gotten them from Squadron Hobbies online in the past. They have a variety of grits ranging from very coarse to very fine, and they're used for smoothing parts of the model progressively. Now another thing I recommend is uh, just have some sandpaper on hand. This is 220 grit sandpaper and this is a wine cork. What I do here is I wrap the sandpaper around the wine cork and it's very effective for sanding curved items like the inside of the airframe tube that we'll need to do when we build this kit. You'll also want to have some tweezers on hand. These are some curved tip tweezers that I've had for years that uh, seem to be my standby for smaller parts. These are some straight tip tweezers. Uh, I don't seem to use these nearly as much, but it's very much a preference thing. Whatever works for you, great. We'll also need a pencil for marking some of the components on the kit, and there's one step in particular that's going to call for a sharpie, so have those on hand as well. This is a little extra optional part. This is called a deburring tool. This is something that the guys who helped me tool up and manufacture the kit informed me about. Apparently it's very common in mold shops. This is a sharp blade that rotates inside this handle and it's used for deburring uh, the inside circumference of round parts. I found it to be very helpful for one step in particular. We'll see that when we go through the videos. It's impossible to build a plastic model without adhesives, and uh, these are a couple options that we're going to use during the build. This uh, Tamiya Extra Thin Cement I like for smaller parts. For larger assemblies such as the fins on this particular model, I'll use this Plastruck uh, more aggressive cement. We'll also be using 
For one step in particular, the uh, attachment of the completed fin assemblies to the airframe, some five minute epoxy, so that's helpful to have on hand as well. Now for detailed application of the thin cement, I like to have an old paintbrush on hand. This is an old fine point brush that's very helpful for applying adhesive to small parts on the model. Great to have on hand. We'll also want to have on hand an assortment of clamps, especially for the uh, thin assembly step. Uh, these are small clamps, spring-loaded, that I got from Home Depot. I think I paid 37 cents a piece for them. I recommend you go purchase about 15 to 20 of these to have on hand during the build. Okay, we have one final step in this segment before we move on. We're going to snip the small plastic parts from the fin sprues to make sure they don't get lost while we work on other things. I've got a small plastic compartment box here I'm going to use to store these parts away. Now you should have four of these sprues in your kit. We're going to begin by snipping away the fins using the purpose-built sprue nipper that I showed earlier. Set that off there. Okay, we're going to begin by snipping the fuse point. This little part here is an exhaust vein. This little part is a turbine shroud cover. This is a pull-out plug cover. And these two parts are halves of the antenna assemblies that trail from each of the fins. Now not every V2 had four antennas. This is all scrap that can be thrown away. And that's it for this segment. <laughs>